So is anybody else kind of bummed that the government didn't shut down the, like yesterday? I was like, I was like naked in the middle of Market Street, ready to run with like my torch and like you know, because like the federal government shuts down and that means that like society immediately collapses and like we all turn to like Rousseauian you know state of nature and nothing is true and everything is permitted and we can just like loot and like pillage and I was all set and then the fucking like Barack Obama like harshed my bacchanalia man he's like fucking bacchanalia harsher in chief I was so so bummed um so next we are incredibly, incredibly lucky to have the legendary, fantastic Maxine Hong Kingston. I'm like totally, totally in awe that she's here, and she's like one of my heroes. I read, I read her novel, her her book Chinaman, when I was 18, and it had this huge impact on me. My head was on fire for like a week afterwards, literally. And like, you know, she's just, she's totally one of my literary heroes, like from way, way, way back. Um, she, you know, her, she also wrote The Fifth Book of Peace, To Be the Poet, Tripmaster Monkey, Through the Black Curtain, and The Woman Warrior. And her newest book is I Love a Broad Margin to My Life. They're all for sale over there, I believe. She's amazing. She's like literally like one of my top favorite writers of all time. And I'm like completely in awe that she's here and actually you know and the thing that really like blows me about about her work is that you know she's she's one of the realist writers and editors you saw that with the the veterans of war veterans of peace anthology that she edited she's all about you know realness and bringing real stories of of the people who other writers and other literary people might overlook you know she's she's all about bringing their stories to us and that's something that I really think is important. And, you know, back in the 80s, it was kind of, she was doing these super real stories of, like, women and immigrants and people who had been overlooked. And at the same time, to, to kind of make ends meet, to pay for that, she was doing these, like, she was ghostwriting these, like, these autobiographies of corporate mascots. And, like, that was the time when, like, the 80s, you probably remember, that was the time when every corporate mascot was, like, huge and, like, these like cartoony weird figures were like everywhere, like Ronald McDonald and the Burger King and everything. And they all had to have these autobiographies and like, you know, the, the fashion was for them to be really decadent and weird and fucked up and kind of like, you know, as Kathy Ackerish as they could possibly make them. So like, for example, the, the Stop and Shop Chicken had this whole like book about being addicted to growth hormones and like synthetic feathers and like, you know, it was just like this crazy trend and you know so Maxine Hong Kingston who in her own writing was trying to really keep it real was having to come up with these weird stories of like for example the the you know um, the Betty Crocker ostrich who you know allegedly was like having these weird cake orgies where the Betty Crocker ostrich would be like rolling around in like a giant swimming pool swimming pool full of hallucinogenic chocolate cake and like you know, and meanwhile, Maxine Hong Kingston for herself is writing about immigrants opening a bakery and like the cakes were like bleeding over into each other and she was trying to keep the cakes separate in her own mind and visualize them separately. The, and it was just, it was like a, a, a you know, a, a cake collision and she was having a harder and harder time separating these two forms of writing that she was doing and, and it was, you know, it finally came to a head. She was working on the, 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 the autobiography of Mrs. Lemonfinger. I don't know if you even remember Mrs. Lemonfinger, the detergent woman who would come to you and be like, bing, it's clean. And, you know, that was Mrs. Lemonfinger. And, like, of course, like, they were like, no, it has to be more transgressive. It has to be more scary and, like, you know, and also nonlinear. We wanted to, like, start with her being born and then go backwards and then forwards. And, like, they wanted to be really avant-garde because that was the fa fashion with these corporate tell-all autobiographies. And so, you know... Um, and they wanted it to be all about her washing dishes in human blood, basically, Mrs. Lemonfinger. And, um, you know, because that was how they made her edgy and interesting. And so Maxine Hong Kingston was finally like, I can't do this anymore. This is not the kind of writing I want to be doing. And she finally went to Mrs. Lemonfinger, who was like in a hot tub with the Arby's cowboy and like, you know, and basically, and the State Farm goat. And she was like... I can't do these anymore. This is like ruining my own writing, and I, I'm, give, I'm returning my advance for the Mrs. Lemonfinger Human Blood book. And they were like, nobody walks away from Mrs. Lemonfinger. And so they like came after her. They sent like 
donut frogs and like all these other weird mascots were chasing her around and like you know she had she lived in fear of her life for a couple of years there um you know ambiguously ethnic pastry men would sort of burst out and like be ambiguously ethnic in her face and it was kind of scary and like i don't know and so she finally like had to construct like cunning traps for them out of you know, like pure narrative realness and like the more artifice they tried to use in their like corporate mascot hood to escape from these traps the more that they were trapped and the deeper that they would get and finally like in order to be released from these traps that she had created out of narrative like you know reality um they gave her her own university they were like if you let us go we'll just give you your own university and they did and so she didn't have to worry about money anymore and she actually has her own entire university which is awesome and she like teaches all the classes and like you know she like gives you a bunch of credits at the start and then takes them away and when you finally have no credits left you've graduated and it's awesome so if you're really nice to her maybe she'll let you enroll please welcome my total hero Maxine Hong Kingston